hello guys welcome back to another android studio tutorial today we are going to learn about how to retrieve information from sqlite database and display it on a recycler view so first here we are going to download some information from my sql database on localhost so open up localhost and go to php my admin and here is a database called fruit db and that database contain a table called the fruit details and here is the data available on this table so now we are going to download this data into our android application and save it on sqlite database and later we retrieve this information from sqlite and display it on a recycler view so start a new android studio project open android studio and start a new project specify an application name and I name it as SQLite with recycler view click next click next select an empty activity click next and click finish okay now the project is created so here we use some material with get so we need to add the needed dependencies so open up the gradle script file open up the builder.gradle file and you need to add the dependencies for recycler view so I copy this statement and paste it here and change this one into recycler view recycler view okay now perform some sync operations okay now the sync process finishes close these files so first we need to download some data from a server so we need to connect to the internet so we have to add the needed permissions for it so open up android manifesto.xml and add a permission for internet so users permission and add the internet permission and close this file okay now here I am going to create a new activity create an empty activity specify name as display list display list and click finish okay now the activity is created and now go to the layout file of the newly created activity so now we need to add a recycler view to this activity to this layout so first I'm going to remove all these margins remove all the margins now here I'm going to add a recycler view so add a recycler view will get specify the width as match parent height as wrap content now we need to specify some ID for the recycler view so it ID specify ID name it as recycler view A recycler view okay okay close the file now go to activity main.xml here I'm going to add some buttons so add a button and there is no need of this text view now I am going to add another button first button for download data and second button for display information display the list so now change the text of the first button into download a list download a list and here change the ID into button 1 now change the text of the second button into a uh, display list display list and change okay here ID is button 2 now make the width of two buttons equal okay okay now go to main activity dot java now here we need to declare some variables for button so create some variables for button button uh, and name it as b1 and b2 now we need to initialize these two variables first one is b1 b1 equal to and first we need to cast it into button now find it using find view by it method 
R dot ID dot button one. Okay. And now initialize the second variable B two. So B two equal to again same thing, and change this one into B two button two. Okay. Now we need to add some click listener for these two buttons. So B one dot set on click listener. Set on click listener new. On click listener. Okay. Now I copy this statement. Now create click listener for second button. Paste it here and change this one into B two. Okay. So whenever user click the second button, we have it to display the newly created activity. So start the second activity from the second button. So start activity, start activity, and specify the intent. New intent. First specify the activity context, main activity dot this, and specify the target activity. That one is display list dot class. Okay. Okay. So whenever you select the first button, we have it to download informations from server. We have it to retrieve informations from my SQL database and save it into our SQLite database. So create a new Java class for the background operations. So create a new Java class with the name uh, background task. Background task. Click OK and extends async task. We need a background class, so extends async task. And for convenience, first here I am going to specify void for the generic types. We will modify it later. So add three void. Now we need to implement some methods. You need to implement this method called the do in background. Click OK. And we need one more methods. We need some other lifecycle methods of async task. First one is on pre-execute. Now we need the on progress update. On progress update. And the last one is on post execute. On post execute. Okay. So first we need to we need to know what is the PHP URL. We need to download data from the MySQL database. So go to the C drive. And here I use a WAMP server, so go to the WAMP server folder, and go to the public directory of WAMP server. Here is a folder called fruit info, and here is the PHP file. Open it. I will show you the PHP file. So this is the PHP file that get information from my SQL database. If you want to learn about how to create this PHP file, you need to watch the previous video. So that is the file URL. So first we need to define the URL. For the data, so string define some variables called the JSON URL. JSON URL equal to and specify the URL HTTP colon. So here I use some Geni Motion virtual device. So we have to use the IPv4 address. So I have to specify the IPv4 address to access the local host. And here is my IPv4 address. Now specify the folder name. The folder name is fruit info. Fruit info, and specify the PHP file name. Here the PHP file name is get fruit details dot PHP. Get fruit details dot PHP. Okay. So before going to use this URL, we need to check whether the URL is valid or not. So copy this URL, and simply open up your browser, and paste the URL here and check it. And this is the response from server. It it is a clear JSON data with a JSON array called the server response. So that means the URL is working fine. Now we can go with the URL. So now go to the do in background method. First thing we need to declare some variables for URL. So create some variables for URL. Equal to new URL. And pass the URL. JSON URL. Of course, we need to use some try catch here. So we need to use some try catch. Okay, my laptop is a little bit slow. That's why it's not showing. 
okay surround that like yes block okay and now we need to declare some variables for http url connection http url connection equal to url dot open connection and we need to typecast this one into http url connection of course here we need to add some catch block we need to add the needed catch block it's an io exception okay it's too much slow stacking again and again okay now add the needed exception scenario exception okay now we need to create some variables for input stream input stream name it as input stream equal to http url connection dot get input stream now we need some buffer reader so buffer deleter equal to new buffer deleter and new input stream reader and pass the input stream variable input stream okay now we need some string builder so create a string builder variable equal to new string builder now create some string string, string variables called the line now start some while loop and specify some conditions on while loop so line equal to buffer deleter dot read the line and the condition is all these statements is not equal to null is not equal to null okay now we need to get the JSON from the server response so string builder we are going to append the JSON. We, need, we are going to append each line into the string builder. So string builder dot append, and add the first line, and after that put some new line character. Okay, that's it. So now all the string data available on this string builder. Now create some variables string JSON data JSON data equal to string builder dot to string and trim it okay now the JSON data available in this variable called the JSON data so now we need to save these informations into the SQLite database so we need to prepare the database so create some contract class for the SQLite database so create a new Java class with name fruit contract we need to define the structure of the schema so create a class called the fruit contract and first we need to declare some constructor for this class so fruit contract okay now create some static class public static public static class fruit entry this class define the structure of the schema so that is very convenient so now declare some variables public static final string first we have to specify the table name table name and here I specify the table name as fruit DB fruit details that is the table name now declare the first column name so public static final string the first column name is name and specify the value as name okay now declare the second column name public static final string public static final string the second column name is calories and specify the column name as calories and the last column is fat so public static final string public static final string fat and specify the value as fat okay so this is the schema and table structure okay now we need to create another Java class for the database operations so create another Java class create another Java class with the name fruit DB helper fruit 
db helper uh, click ok and extends sqlite open helper sqlite open helper and here you need to add some methods like on create and on upgrade and click ok now here we need a constructor so before going to add the constructor we need some variables so public static final db name final string we have to specify the database name so declare some variables called the db name equal to and here I specify the database name as fruit db now declare another variable for the database version so public static final int public static final int db version specify the database version db version I put some integer value 1 okay now define some constructor so public uh, fruit db helper fruit db helper and this constructor need one argument it's a context object context uh, name it as context okay now from this constructor we have to create the database so, so call the super and pass the context now pass the database name and final argument is the database version so in num some null arguments and the last argument is the database version okay and for convenience here I'm going to display some logcat message so we can easily find out where is the error so simply specify some logcat message database operations database operations and specify the message as database created database is created okay now we have to create the table so we need some uh, create query and we need some delete query so here I'm going to create the create query so public static final string create query create query now write the query create table create table and get the table name from the contract class so get the table name from contract class our contract class name is fruit entry so fruit entry dot table name is table name available on this variable called the table name okay now open a bracket and specify the column name its data type etc so now specify a bracket now get the first column name from the contract class so fruit entry dot first column name is name now specify the data type for this column so always make sure that you put some space before the data type here the first data type is text and put a comma now specify the second column name get the second column name from the contract class second column name is calories now specify the data type it is an integer so put some space and specify the data type as integer put a comma integer put a comma and get the last column name the last column name is fruit entry dot fat now specify the data type it is of double type double and close the bracket close the bracket and put a semicolon here for the SQL query and finally close the statement with another semicolon okay so you need to you need you need some extra precautions while create this query many people make too much mistakes while write this query okay so now the query is ready now we need another query for drop the table so private static final string drop table delete table 
Okay, drop table, drop query, drop query equal to drop table if exist if exist and specify the table name if exist and specify the table name okay get the table name from the contract class so float entry dot table name okay so now we can create the table now we can create the table from the on create method from the on create lifecycle methods so here only one argument called on SQLite database so db dot execute sql and pass the query create query this will create the table on SQLite database so to track the operations put some logcat message here so here that table is created table is created okay now from the on upgrade method if the database version changes we need to upgrade the database so if db dot execute execute drop query and put some message here database updated okay and after that database updated okay now we need to create some methods for put information to the database so create some method for add information to the database so put information and this methods need some arguments first one is the columns first one string name second one is int calories int calories and the last two column is double fat also we need some SQLite database variables SQLite database name it as DB so for add information into the database we need some content values variable so create some content value object content values equal to new content values now add the information to the content values in the form of name value pair so content values dot put first specify the column name so get the column names from the contract class first one is name and specify value for the first column now specify value for second column get the column name from the contract class fruit entry dot calories and pass the value now the last column content values dot put specify the column name the last column name is fat and specify the value for the last column fat okay and finally add information to the database so use the SQLite database variables so create some variable long l equal to it always return a long value long l equal to db dot insert first specify the table name specify table name now some null value and last specify the content values so this will add information and one row to the table so here also we have to track the database operation so put some logcat message here and here one row inserted one row inserted okay so now we need some other methods for retrieve information from the SQLite database so declare some other methods define some other methods public here this return type is a cursor object public cursor get information get information and this method need one argument is an object of SQLite database SQLite database DB 
okay now create some string value we have to specify the projections create a string array string array projections now get each column from the float entry contract class first one is name now the second column name is uh, fruit entry dot calories and the last column is fat fruit entry dot fat okay now create some cursor variables cursor equal to db dot query first specify the table name get the table name from the contract class table name now specify the projections now we need five null values there are there is other five arguments so you need how to pass null value for all the other five arguments okay so this statement will retrieve information from database so now return the cursor return cursor okay so now we finished coding for sqlite database now we can put information to the sqlite database okay and close these files go to background dot background task dot java so now here we already have the json data available on this string variable called json data now we need to pass the json data and save the information to the sqlite database so first create some variable json object equal to new json object and pass the json data available on this variable called json data here you need to add some catch clause add a catch clause now create some json array first we need to get the json array from the json object so json array equal to json object dot get json array and specify the server response array server response okay so now we got the json array now we need to get each of the json object from the json array so we need some while loop for it so before that create some variables in count equal to zero now start some while loop for getting each of the json object from the json array and specify the condition as count less than json array size of json array so json array dot length now we need to retrieve each of the json object from the json array so first you have to open connection to the sqlite database so creates an object of fruit db helper equal to new fruit db helper so this class needs some context some activity context so here i'm going to declare some variables we need some context on this async task so create some context variables context ctx and for initialize the variables we need some constructor for this class so create a constructor background task and initialize that variable and here we need some argument say context so this dot ctx equal to ctx okay and make that one into public so now we can initialize the fruit dp helper object and pass the context here okay now we need some sqlite database variable so sqlite database name it as db equal to fruit db helper dot get writable database okay so now we open a connection to the sqlite database so before going to so here we can simply disconnect the http url connection no need of this so close the connection from HTTP URL. So here we open a connection to the SQLite database. Now we can put information to the SQLite database. So call that method fruit db helper dot put information. 
so before going to add information be how to get each of the JSON object from the JSON array so create some JSON object available here JSON object equal to JSON array JSON array dot get JSON object and pass the index pass variable count and increment the here it is JSON object JSON object okay and increment count by one count plus plus okay now we can get each each inform now we can get each row from the JSON object so JSON object dot get string first one is name second column name is JSON object dot get int second one is calories and the last column is JSON object dot get double that one is fat also here you need to pass an object of SQLite database so pass that one also DB so now we add information to the SQLite database okay so and finally we can close connection to the SQLite database so now we can test the application so before going to test it we have to start the async task okay before going to start it we need some progress dialog so create some progress dialog variable and we can initialize the progress dialog from on pre-execute so progress dialog equal to new progress dialog and pass the context ctx now progress dialog dot set in determinate into true now progress dialog dot set title set title into please wait now set some message on the progress dialog so progress dialog dot set message download download in progress now progress dialog dot set cancelable into false and finally make it visible progress dialog dot show okay so after finishing the background task we need to close the progress dialog so we have to dismiss it from the on post execute method so progress dialog dot dismiss okay and for convenience here put some slight sleep so sleep the background thread for some 500 milliseconds and add the new dot catch block okay so that's it so now we can test it so we need to start the background task so whenever user click the second button so here we need some rebuild so rebuild the project okay so whenever user click the first button we have to start the background task so go to main activity dot java so for the first button click we have to start the background operation so background create some variables for background task name it as background task equal to new background new background task and pass the context main activity dot this now execute the background task so background task dot execute okay now we can test it run the application select a virtual device click OK okay now the application available on this virtual device so before going to run it I clear the lockout window so we can track the database operations so now I'm going to download list so download list 
okay now the list is down successfully downloaded so we can check the locket so here is here this database is created table created and this much of data this much of row is inserted so now we can check the SQLite database so open Android device monitor open Android device monitor and go to the file export file explorer at the right side now there is a folder called the data open that folder and there is another folder called the data expand that one also and you need to find out the package name of your application you need to find out your application so here our application name is SQLite yeah, here it is SQLite Recycler V and open the database folder and here is the database fruit DB now here I'm going to pull out this database from the device so here is option pull a file from the device now I'm going to save the database on my desktop with the name fruit DB select desktop and click save okay now here here it is now the database available on my desktop now open SQLite browser now open SQLite browser and open the database on it so now open database and it is available on desktop the select all files and the file name is fruit DB select that one open it okay now browse the table now select table now select the table here the table is fruit details and here it is all the data is successfully saved into the SQLite database and here is the data available on my SQL database so now we successfully download the data and save it into SQLite database now we have to display this data on a recycler view so the first thing we have to create so whenever user click the first button second button we have to display list so the first thing we need to we need some custom layout for the recycler view so, I, so right click the layout file and create a new layout resource file and I name it as row layout row layout okay now go to the XML file first change the orientation into horizontal change orientation into horizontal and change the height of this layout into 75 dp 75 bit dp so now we need to add three text views for display fruit name calories and fat so here I add three text views first text view with IT name second text view with IT calories and last one with IT fat okay so this is uh, this one is the layout for each row of the recycler view so close the file now we need some java class we need to create some java class so right click the package and create a new java class I name it as fruit click ok now create some variables private string name private int calories private in calories now the last one is private double private double fat now add getter and setter methods for these variables so add getter and setter methods and select all the variables okay now we need a constructor for this class so create a constructor public fruit and for this constructor we need three arguments string name int calories int calories and the last one is double fat okay now we need to call the setter methods from the constructor so this dot set name and pass the name argument now call the second setter method set calories and pass calories and the last one is set fat and pass the argument fat okay that's it uh, now close the file now we need to create some adapter for the recycler view so we need other another Java class 
before here I'm going to declare some variables for a recycler view so create some variable for a recycler view and create variable for adapter of recycler view now the layout manager for recycler view recycler view dot layout manager name it as layout manager okay and now we can initialize these variables first one is the recycler view so recycler view first typecast that one into recycler view now find it find the view by it r dot it dot recycler view now initialize the layout manager layout manager equal to new linear layout manager and pass the context this now recycler view dot set layout manager for the recycler view set layout manager and pass layout manager now recycler view dot set has fixed size set has fixed size into true this will improve performance of the recycler view okay okay that's it now we need the adapter so create another java class for adapter so create a java class with the name recycler adapter recycler adapter click ok and this class extends recycler view dot adapter Now add some methods like on create view holder, on bind view holder and get item count. Click OK. Okay, the methods are now available on this class. Now here we need to create some view holder class. So public static public static class recycler a view holder recycler view holder. that extends recycler view dot view holder okay and this class needs some constructor recycler view holder recycler view holder and that constructor need one argument is an object of view class view now Okay, now call the super method. Call the super method super and pass the view argument. Okay, now we need to. Okay, here I add some generic type that is an object of recycler view holder. So this method return the return type is an object of recycler view holder here also the first argument is an object of recycler view holder okay now here I'm going to create some text views variables so text view first one is name uh, second one is calories and the last one is fat now initialize these text views from the constructor of this class so first one is name name equal to uh, cast it into text cast it into text view now find it find it using the view argument view dot uh, find the view by id r dot id dot name now the now copy this one now here is the second column calories r dot id dot calories now initialize the last text review that one is uh, fat and here it is r dot id dot fat okay so we initialize the text reviews from the custom layout for the recycler view so now here I'm going to declare some array list array list that can hold objects of fruit class name it as array list equal to new array list
okay now create some constructor for this class for initializing the array list so recycler adapter and with one argument is an array list with fruit object okay now initialize the array list so this dot array list equal to array list okay now from the get item count method return the size of the array list array list dot size okay now go to the on create view holder method first create some view variable view equal to layout inflator layout inflator dot from parent dot get context get context dot inflate r dot layout dot row layout now parent and final argument is false okay now create some object of the view holder class so recycler view holder equal to new recycler view holder and pass the view argument okay and finally return that object from here so recycler view holder now go to the on bind view holder method so from here we have to assign values for the text views so first create an object of fruit class fruit equal to and get each of the fruit object from the array list array list dot get and pass the position now we not we need to initialize the text views so builder dot name dot set text and call the getter methods of the fruit class so fruit dot get the name now holder dot calories is an integer holder dot calories dot set text it is an integer so integer dot to string and call the getter method from fruit class fruit dot get calories now the last one is holder dot fat it is of double type set to text so string dot string dot values of and get the double value from the fruit class so fruit dot get get fat okay okay that's it now we finish the coding on the recycler adapter okay now go to the display list dot java so now we need to retrieve information from sqlite database and display it on a recycler view so first here i'm going to declare some array list that contain object of fruit class name it as array list equal to new array list okay okay now we need to open connection to the sqlite database so create some variable for fruit db helper equal to new fruit db helper and pass context now we need an object of sqlite database so sqlite database name it as sqlite database equal to fruit db helper dot get readable database okay now create some cursor variable cursor equal to fruit db helper dot get information and pass the sqlite database variable now we need to get each of the row from the cursor so cursor dot move it to first move it to the first row cursor dot move it to first and start some do while loop here while and specify the condition as cursor dot move it to next okay so now we need to get each row from the cursor 
so create some fruit object here so fruit name it as fruit equal to new fruit now get each column data from the cursor so cursor dot get string zero to index first index now cursor dot get int second column and the last one is cursor dot get double it is two okay so now we get the information and save it inside the fruit class now add each of the fruit object into the array list so array list dot add fruit and after this one we have to close connection to the fruit class fruit db helper dot close now we can initialize the adapter for the recycler view so adapter equal to new recycler adapter and pass the array list array list now set the adapter for the recycler view recycler view dot set adapter and pass the adapter okay and that's it now we can run the application select the virtual device Okay, now the application available on this virtual device so we already download the list so now I'm going to display it on recycler view so click this button and here it is now all the informations are available on the recycler view we download data from my SQL and save it into SQLite so now I download it again so now you can see the data is replicated here so now I download it again now display it again and here you can see each row is add again the data is replicated here so this is how we get information from MySQL database and display it on a recycler view I hope you understand the concepts thank you for watching see you in the next episode